Well, one man's trash can be another man's treasure. Today, hundreds of volunteers sift through tons of garbage grub from Mr. Trash Wheel to record data about litter in Baltimore City's harbor. Our Alexis Davila tells us how the dumpster dive efforts can end up affecting legislation. Packed high to the brim. There's probably at least three tons of trash in that dumpster. Volunteers scoop buckets of trash out of Mr. Trash Wheel's collection from Inner Harbor. Hundreds of people gather at Baltimore Community Tool Bank to slip on gloves and grab tools to get right to work. Many of them are first timers, like Mari Bugayon, who is part nervous and excited. Given my background in public health research, like I know the importance of um, data collection, in particular, getting at you know accurate numbers. And it's great to see all the environmental efforts, including this one going on around Baltimore. At each table, volunteers are sorting through the trash, and they divide it in about eight different groups, from plastic bottles to PPE to even food wrappers. The trash is then weighed at the station, and data is recorded. Data is power, and this is a baseline of data that allows us to compare what a standard dumpster looks like in 2023 to save prior years. Sherry Wilson with Trash Free Maryland says the numerical breakdown helps them advocate policy change to lawmakers, just like the ban on foam food containers. We did that by knowing the number of those containers in our uh, litter and trash. Adam Linquist says based on their findings, they can say legislation is effective in changing people's behaviors. When the state banned foam containers, we saw a 85% reduction in the amount of foam ending up in our waterways. With trends like these, he hopes to one day say goodbye to Mr. Trash Wheel. Our big goal is to put Mr. Trash Wheel on a diet. We would love to not need trash wheels at all in the Baltimore Harbor. In Baltimore, I'm Alexis Davila for WJZ.